Assalamu alaikum students and a very good morning to all of you. This is your English teacher Ms. Azmana and I am here with your week 12 home task. Students, the unit that we are going to begin today is the seeing eyes. Unit number 6. Now students, this unit is very interesting. As you can see, there are two pictures in this in this slide. We have a boy who's very close to nature, who's loving the flowers and touching them, and who's smiling, and he's having a beautiful forest and a hut with brooks at the back of this uh, of this boy. And there is this huge green meadow right behind him. It seems like he loves nature and he is more close towards the objects made by Allah Almighty. And at the same time, we have another boy, a boy who seemed to be happy with a wallet and lots of money in his hands. But he's all alone. There is no one at the back. Now. I hope this picture is giving you enough idea that what are we going to read in this unit. Let's begin with the story. There was once a poor woodcutter who had two sons. When he died, he left them a small hut on the edge of the forest. They had little to live upon. But nevertheless, every night the younger son took his blue porridge bowl, in which he had purposely left half his supper, and placed it on the doorsteps of the elves. Now students, let me tell you, Elves are little people. They are fairy-like people. They are honest and they are very innocent. And they live in their fairy land. The other, in contrast, scrapped his dish to the last drop. This is what thrifty folk do, said he. Someday I shall be rich. Now, the younger son went alone into the forest one morning to cut wood. He carried an apple and a bit of bread in his pocket. When he had done his work, he sat down to eat them. While he was eating his bread, he remembered that there was a fairy ring not far away. Now let me tell you students that fairy ring is a ring made up of mushrooms that is fern in a forest and it comes or it, we can say it appears after every six nights and the elves come out and they wait for the people who may help them and they can gift them. Ah! laughed he to himself. I have it. I will not eat my apple, but I will take it to the fairy ring and drop it there. It will make a fine feast for the little people. Then, because he had reached the fairy ring, he dropped the apple as he planned. Now we observe from these three paragraphs that the younger brother was very considerate towards people and the elder brother was greedy and materialistic. Scarcely had he done this when a little wee man popped out of the fern. Now let me tell you students, wee man 
is one of the fairy man or the elves. He's small in size. He popped out of the fern means he came out of that fairy ring. His coat was made of a cardinal flower and his eyes twinkled through the ragged white locks. As the stars peep between silver clouds on a windy day, this simply shows us that the wee man was an, a, a neat and clean and a shining man. Friend, he said, the little people thank you for your gift. One does not give a recompense for love, but the fairies themselves love you and they have sent you the best gift that they have. It is called the seeing eyes. It is an invisible gift, but it is worth more than wealth. Therefore, the younger son thanked the little wee man and he hurried home through the forest to tell his brother all that had happened to him. All the way upon the path homeward, he saw new wonders in the trees and flowers. It seemed, too, that he understood the songs of the birds and the chant of the little brooks and that he passed. Now, students, we see that the younger brother now could see things beyond the normal people. This was the gift of the wee man for being considerate towards others. The younger brother was very happy to have this gift. He could understand the songs of the birds, the chant of the brooks, rivers and streams. In other words, he was extremely happy. When he reached home, he told his brother all that had happened. What nonsense, declared the elder son. Your eyes look to me just as they ever did. Why did you not make the opportunity to ask for a gift of value, one that could be seen? I would have taken nothing less than a purse of gold. Why did you not make the chance to ask for it? That night, when his brother set his bowl upon the doorstep, the elder brother put his out also, for he decided to win the favor of the little people so that he too might have a gift. Six nights he placed his blue porridge bowl on the doorstep, and on the morning of the seventh day, he went out into the woods towards the fairy ring with an apple in his pocket. If the little wee man speaks to me, he determined, I will take nothing that cannot be seen. I will ask him outright for the purse of gold. Then, because he had reached the fairy ring, he dropped the apple as he had planned. Scarcely had he dropped it than it happened to him as it had to his brother. The little wee man popped out of the fern. His coat was made of a cardinal flower and his bright eyes twinkled through his ragged white locks as the stars peep between the silver clouds on a windy night. Why did you drop the apple in our fairy ring? he asked. It's my seventh gift to the little people, replied the elder son. In return for all that I have done, I ask for the purse of gold. So, replied the little wee man thoughtfully. Well, I will give it to you. 
It is really of little worth in the eyes of the fairies. Content and happiness do not go with it unless you know its secret. There are many things that gold cannot buy. So he gave the elder brother the purse and scarcely giving thanks, the elder brother grasped it and turned towards the city beyond the woods. He could not wait to see what he could buy. And if I, I should tell you the half of his possessions after he had reached the city, you might envy him. Nevertheless, it did not take him long to find out that there are many things money cannot buy. So students, he had no love for that may not be bought. He had no content, for he was always thinking of his possessions and seeking new ones. He had no happiness because he had no content and he had nothing but the things that money can buy. As a result, he was very unhappy. He thought of nobody but himself from morning till evening and he did no good with what he possessed. On the other hand, the younger brother, the younger son lived on in the little hut on the edge of the forest. Though he had no money to give away, all poor people loved him. Wherever he went, he carried the magic of the seeing eyes with him. All the fields, the woods, the streams and the brooks were more truly his than his brother's. For he loved the grasses, the flowers, the trees, the birds, and understood them all. Surely, you need not ask if he was happy. For it is not everyone to whom is given the wealth of the seeing eye. See students, many rich and wealthy people can be unhappy and unsatisfied and uncontented. At the same time, People who are close to nature, they are happy, they have friends, and they love nature. Thank you very much, students. I hope you have understood the story and you will love it. Thank you.